Roth Carey, gentlemen at the trial table, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Um, what you just heard is uh, an interesting theory. I think it's interesting, interesting how they reached their theory and their conclusions. Hopefully the evidence will shed some light on that. The state is asking you to believe that Mr. Miller deliberately, with purpose, to hinder an investigation, made a false statement in order to hinder an investigation. He just set forth, forth the theory that that investigation would have, would have somehow hindered his own election campaign, I suppose. Well, the indictment in this case runs from November of 2002 through November 2003, and you just heard one of the statements that they say he lied about was November 19th and 20th of 2003. That's after the election. I think that's what the evidence is going to show. You can see right here where they're carrying. I'm sorry, December 2003. December's after the election as well. Very well. The evidence will not only contradict the state's theory in this case, but it'll fly in the face of common sense. You see, I anticipate the evidence will demonstrate that Craig Miller, as Mr. Sillow pointed out, the safety service director for the city, was the person responsible for over 14 departments, ultimately responsible for 500 employees, multi-million dollar budget, a father, a four, a husband, an accountant, a son, a brother, did the best he could under circumstances that he was faced with at the time. He answered to the best of his ability the questions that were placed to him by Lieutenant Rohner and Lieutenant Poling. The state would like you to believe that for some reason it was wrong for Mr. Miller to inquire if there was an investigation going on in the utilities department. Why is that wrong if you're ultimately responsible for that person? I suggest to you that that flies in the face of common sense and will be demonstrated by the evidence. Contrary to the state's assertions, I anticipate the evidence to be as follows. That back in November 2002, Doug Johnson, and Doug Johnson alone, went to Mr. Charles Hoffer and said, hey, Mr. Hoffer, guess what? I've got this equipment we're looking for to dig this ditch, all right? And at the time, contrary to what the state would like you to believe, there isn't this happy city where people share product and people share equipment. In fact, people are fairly territorial about their equipment. And while the streets department had something, it wasn't readily available to the sewer department. So Johnson says, hey, geez, I've got this equipment. It's uh, with a firm that I'm associated with, a firm I'm associated with. And we can rent from them, and it's probably a better deal. Well, so says Johnson, OK? Hoffer sends an email to Mr. Miller November 13th and says, hey, guess what? Johnson says he knows where he can get some equipment to clean these ditches that haven't been cleaned in 20 to 30 years. It's with a firm he's associated with. There's some discussion back and forth between Hoffer and Miller. On November 25, 2002, there's another email. And this email says, from Hoffer to Miller, the vendor's going to be JM Grills, an established vendor with the city. Well, it says, great, get the equipment. Now, the state wants to suggest to you that Mr. Miller is all-knowing, all-powerful, must remember every minute and every day of his life and remember every detail of every day. I suggest to you the state's frankly giving him too much credit. I think the evidence from the witness stand, in particular Mr. Hoffer, will give you an idea of the day-to-day -day activities that Mr. Miller has. 
And I'll suggest to you that this $30,000 ditch digging equipment, while important, wasn't the most important thing on the plate at the time. But we're not here to determine whether or not he made a mistake. We're here to determine whether or not he lied to the police. 